Hi, everybody. Welcome to the IFIS box tree mock training. My name is Emma Perez. I am a PHSS for the, Chir for the CHIRP program located in South Texas. With me is Noah Stewart. He is our data analyst located in Austin, Texas. And we are going to begin this training for IFIS. So IFIS stands for Integrated Plant Health Information System and it provides a single web-based application for all levels of USDA plant health responders. There are two forms of application for IFIS. There is the desktop, which is usually referred to as IFIS web. There is the mobile application, which is usually referred to as IDC. If you would like more information on IFIS web or IDC, we have a resource link for you, and that will take you to um, different modules and different job aids. But today, in specific, we are going to be talking and learning about IDC. IDC stands for APHIS Data Collector. And before we begin, we have a few things that I would like to talk to you guys about so it can make the application more clearer. IFIS is a one directional um, application. So you have a location, then you have a site, then you have a activity, then you have a sample if you collect a sample. And we have another link for you guys. It's the IFIS lexicon of words. You can go in there and read more about the definitions, the proper definitions for these different sections and always refer to your box stream of protocols for the proper data entry or naming convention. So again, a location, for example, a location can be a nursery, so Jones Nursery. A site can be a greenhouse within that nursery and an activity is associated with that particular greenhouse. So before you can go to a site, you need to create a location once you create a location, you, you get a site. Once you enter all the information for the site, you can go to an activity. Once you enter all the information for the activity, you can move on to a sample if you have it. So an example of this is a location is a parcel, a piece of land, a piece of um, property. A site is the host for that particular location. Um, for us here in Texas, it's citrus, but for the box tree moth, there's a vast variety of hosts. So your location is going to be that property, that residence, or that business. And then your site is going to be your host material. Once you log into IDC, you will see red and green bars on the left side of the screen. So red means it's a required field. Green means it's auto-populated. When using IDC, there's a few steps you'll always have to do. So before you open IDC up, make sure you're connected to the network or Wi-Fi. Once you open up the application, you will use your e-authentication, username, and password. Once you're logged in, you will select your office. Then you will select your assignment. Then you will select your workbook. Your assignment and workbook titles depends on your office, how they name it. So just make sure you know the proper name of the assignment and the proper name of the workbook. Once you're on the workbook screen, you are ready to enter your location information. Since you have to use e-authentication to log in, a few things to remember is that e-authentication expires every 60 days. Um, it, you don't get notified that it's expired. The only way you can notice it on IDC is once you're on IDC and you try to log in using e-authentication, it won't let you, like it will not move forward. So if that happens, you will have to log in to the desktop and update your password. For that, we have also here are a few links on how to reset your password for e-authentication, or if this is your first time using IDC, these are the steps that you will follow. Another thing to know too is for location, site, activity, or sample, 
you'll always have to select new, which is on the top right hand corner. So let's take an example of how to log in. You will make sure you're on Wi Fi, then you will open up the application. You'll use your e authentication username and password. Then you will hit login. You will select your office. You will select your assignment. You're going to say yes. You're going to select your workbook. Once here, then at this particular screen, you're ready to head out to the field. For location, you'll have to enter your location name, category, type, address one, city, county, zip code, comments, comments that are relative to that particular location, and you'll hit save. So this is how it's going to look on IDC. So you'll enter your location name. Category and type are auto populated to commercial and commercial location. You can leave it like this if that's the type of businesses business that you are. If not, um, there's a drop down menu that you can select. Address one. City, state, county. zip code now as you can see the zip code is not in green nor red but we have found that if we don't enter it gives us a little bit of an issue when we try to approve locations i make it a habit of looking at the lats and longs <clears throat> to make sure that it's working comments you can enter any comments relative to that location. You'll hit save. Once you hit save, the sites is going to light up blue. That means you entered everything correctly and you can move on to the next section, which is sites. Let's take a look of how to enter a location. So at this section, you can hit new. You'll give it a little bit of time to collect the GPS coordinates. It doesn't take that long, maybe a few seconds. Once it catches the GPS coordinates, you can go ahead and enter your location name. Your category, again, it's commercial, but if you're at a residence, go ahead and select the residence, residential. Your type is automatic to commercial location. Enter your address. City. You select your county, enter your zip code. If the screen doesn't let you get to the save button, you have to kind of like swipe it up and then swipe it down. Then at this point, you can hit um, save after you confirm all your information is correct. And then the site icon on the bottom will light up. That means you're ready to go to the next section. A location, before you upload, it's always good to make sure that you double check it. Once you upload and your approver approves that information, your location on IDC cannot be modified, nor can it be deleted. So before they approve and before you upload, it's a good habit of going back and making sure that all your information is correct. Once your location is done, site is the next thing. So you'll have to enter your site name, targeted, and save. This is how that screen is going to look. So you have your site name, targeted, and then you hit save and you can move on to activities. Let's take a quick look of how the site works. So you'll hit new. You'll also have to give it a few seconds to catch the GPS coordinates. Once it retrieves them, then you're ready to enter your site name, 
targeted, I believe it's a yes, but go ahead and check with your protocol or your job aid to make sure. Once you enter everything, you can hit save and the activities icon will light up and you're ready to go to the next section. So the site works the same as the location. Before you upload, you can make corrections, but once it's uploaded and your approver approves it, on IDC, you will not be allowed to make any modifications or be able to delete it. Once you're done with your site, you're going to go into activity. So for activity, it's going to be the date, post, action. The next three are auto populated, which is the tool, the lore, and the targeted pest. Then you will hit save. This is how the activity page looks like. So the date is auto populated. I make it a habit to just take a quick glance, make sure it's the correct one. You'll select your host. Method is already there, which is trapping. You will select your action. For your first time going to these locations, it will be install. After that, it will be monitoring. So for example, once you select your host, the following three items are auto-populated. So your tool, your lore, and your targeted pest. Once you enter that and it auto populates, you can hit save and then the blue sample icon will turn on. Let's take a look of how to enter an activity. You'll select new. You'll select your host. You'll select your action. Again, it's going to be install. After that, it's going to be monitor. And then you can save. And as you can see, the sample icon turns on. If you have a sample, you will select sample. If not, then you can select back, back, and it will take you to the location. Let's pretend you have a sample. So for a sample, you're going to enter your collection number, the type, and save. So this is how the sample selection sample screen shows. So you're going to enter your collection number and your type, and you will hit save. Let's take a quick look at that. You're going to select sample at the bottom. Then you're going to select new at the top. You'll enter your collection number. And your type will be inset. And then you can hit save. So once you enter your sample or once you enter your activity and you want to go back to the location screen, there is a few methods on how to do it. This is the quickest. So now that you're in your sample screen, you will hit the location button on the bottom left. You will hit the three icons on the top. And you will hit location. Let me do that one more time because that was kind of quick. So you'll hit your location bottom, your location button on the bottom the three icons on the top, and then you'll hit location, and it will bring you to the location screen. So once you're here, you can enter a new location for that workbook. If you want to review your, your work, you'll just select the location that you want to review, and you can just scroll down. You can hit site. The yellow and green icon, the colors, I'm sorry, the colors, it just means you entered something, you modified something in that um, location. So after you review everything, again, you can hit the location icon in the bottom left. And then you it will take you back to that particular location.
and you can hit locations and it will take you to all the locations that you entered in that workbook. For uploading, while you're on the workbook screen, you're going to swipe to the left and you're going to select the, I, the upload icon. And this is my assignment page. I'm going to select my assignment. While you're here on your workbook screen, you're going to swipe it to the left. You're going to hit the icon. And it's going to tell you success. Everything has been uploaded. Once you see that, that means everything has been uploaded and it's off your iPad. So to recap, you have a location, a site, an activity, and a sample if you collected a sample. So for me, for example, I have um, different offices so I will select my office you're going to select your assignment you're going to select your workbook you're going to enter your location again the GPS takes a little bit it shouldn't take more than a minute if it takes more than a minute then go ahead and close the application and reopen it you'll enter your location name For this example, I did a residential location, so I selected residential. Your address, your city, your county, oop, I forgot zip code, but you'll enter your zip code, please. And you'll select your site enter a site again this location and site the gps takes a little bit to catch but just give it a few seconds go enter your site name targeted is yes you'll save and you'll go on to activities you'll select new select your host Select your action. And then you'll save and then you will go to sam sample if you collected a sample. Sample type, you'll hit save. Then you can go back. So something to remember too is a workbook can have many locations. A location can have many sites. A site can have many activities and a activity can have many samples. So you're not restricted to just one action per, um, you're not restricted one sample per activity or one activity per site or one site per location. So for example, let's take uh, my office. So here I'm going to log in. I'm going to select my office here locally, which is um, more airbase. I'm going to select one of the workbooks that I know we have a lot of locations. You'll hit yes. This is the workbook. I'm going to go ahead and open it so you guys can see the location. So this one has a lot of locations. This particular location has many sites. Again, this is just to show that a workbook can carry many locations. A location can carry many sites. A site can carry many activities. There's a few things to be aware of when you're um, working with IDC.
So for example, IDC sometimes will get stuck on the refreshing the assignment data. So for example, here, I tried to um, upload. So when I selected the upload icon, it just stayed stuck. Like it was just going in circles, circles. So once it's stuck, I would say more than a few seconds or more than a minute for sure, go ahead and double click your iPad, close out the application, make sure you're on Wi-Fi or the network, reopen the application, sign in, go to your office, go to your assignment, and then go to your workbook, workbook and go ahead and select, swipe it, select it and upload, and it should work after that. The next error that is frequent is getting the office. When you log in, it will just not let you log in. So with this error, you'll do the same thing. You will double click it, close the application, reopen it, and then log in. And it should allow you to do that. A hard reset. If you are using IDC a lot, um, IDC holds on to memory. So one of the things that the um, IFIS group made was they did a hard reset button. And what that does, it kind of cuts the the memory. It, it cuts it off from whatever you did previously. So for this one, you will select the three icons on the top and select hard reset. You're going to say yes, and it's going to go ahead and wipe it. You want to do the hard reset after you upload because if you do it before, you will lose your data. So make sure that once you upload, you hard reset. Past assignments, just so you guys are, are aware of that with IDC, if the end date is not correct, it will go to past assignments. It doesn't mean that you cannot use this workbook, it just means the end date has already expired, but you can still go in there and use it and enter data. Another thing to remember too is before you um, start, make sure that your privacy setting for IFIS is always on. That way it can catch the GPS coordinates. Some of the things that we found here that helped us is we both of our team members takes an iPad. One takes one and the other one takes the another one. That way, if one goes down, we have a backup. So we always like to take two types of devices out to the field just in case. Um, we also do paper just in case both iPads go down. You still have that information in a hard copy. Here are some of the resources that are offered. So we have general training documents, mobile data collection tools, PEST program specific training documents, and IFIS itself. So for general training documents, you have IFIS basic job aids. So here you can find your um, lexicon of words, more uh, proper definitions of surveys, your user roles, the four steps to data entry. In your mobile data collection link, you can find um, modules for IFIS itself. There's 10 available. For PEST, program specific training documents, you can see the job aids that were created for this particular incident. And then for IFIS itself, you have one-on-one um, -on -one training material. So you have IFIS access instructions, user roles, more, um, more training material in case you guys are interested in that. This concludes our training. If you guys have any questions, um, please feel free to reach out to your lead, uh, your supervisor, and they can reach out to the management team. Mm -hmm.